Reprise the debate. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Trois Rivières. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Since the beginning of our debate on this topic, which is of concern to me, I get the impression that the discussion is going every which way, which may be normal with such a sensitive topic. We're talking about marijuana, which is commonly called a soft drug. Some are worried about what could happen. So let me get back to the motion itself. So we know what we're talking about, especially Part A, which is part of our uh, New Democrat motion. That the House recognize the contradiction of continuing to give Canadians criminal records for simple possession of marijuana. That's what we're talking about. Simple possession of marijuana after the government has stated that it should not be a crime. So that's the situation we are in since the last election campaign. I often stated during the campaign when citizens asked me my opinion about the dreams, promises and commitments of the Liberal Party, I'd say be careful. There's a well-known uh, saying that in an election campaign, the Liberals tend to campaign left, but when they come to power, they govern right. So right now, we're exactly in that situation where the dreams of Canadians are being broken, and there are multiple examples of that. For instance, all those who were thrilled about a tax cut and a increased income when they have trouble making, making ends meet. But once in power, very few people uh, got a tax cut. Those who got the biggest tax cut were the best off. Seniors, in my riding, were particularly affected by this approach of investing in home care, but there was nothing in the budget about it. In the environment, we thought, oh, at least there'll be light at the end of the tunnel. The Liberal uh, government went to Paris with the same commitments as the previous government. So, regardless of the subject at hand, there is a gap, an abyss, in fact, between the vision that the government presented during its election campaign and what it's serving up now. In the case of marijuana, I would say that the gap's even wider, if such a thing is possible. Everyone was told that marijuana would quickly be legalized, but that's not the case at all. But what remains in the perception, especially the perception of adolescents, and I'm very sensitive to that because for most of my life, I was involved with teenagers, my own teenage years, of, of course, but then I taught 25 years in that age group. If we remember our own adolescence, most of us here may be younger than me, but one often thinks one's invincible. Whatever you do as a teenager is risk-free, you think. And we'll always manage to uh, get out of something. If you experience smoking of joint, you can't get arrested because that only happens to other people, doesn't it? But the reality is completely different. And for thousands and thousands of Quebecers and Canadians, the risk of taking the risk of uh, smoking a joint or eating a pot-laced muffin is that you could end up with a criminal record. A criminal record, despite a liberal promise, where they said that should not happen in our society. Nobody should end up with a criminal record for simple possession of marijuana. So that's the dichotomy. The whole imbroglio around this question that we're trying to resolve here with a very simple approach that says, Mr. Speaker, let's go forward and decriminalize marijuana possession. That's one measure that the vast majority, and I'm, when I say majority, I'm not saying 50% plus one here. 68% of Canadians, 68% of Canadians feel that this would be a good thing to do, to decriminalize simple possession of marijuana. Let's remember, we're talking about simple possession here. I must admit that 
although these files are diametrically opposed, I have some trouble with the Liberal government's inconsistency here. In the last few weeks, we talked about Bill C-14 at length, that is physician-assisted dying, and we were told, despite the clarity of the unanimous decision of Supreme Court justices, no, society's not ready for that. We have to have a step-by-step -step approach, which led us to this proposal by the Liberals of uh, reasonably foreseeable death, which was contested not only in this House, but in the Senate. Small steps are necessary for physician-assisted dying. When it comes to examining simple possession of marijuana, well, apparently, step-by-step step is no good. We have to end up tomorrow morning with legalization. Everything we were promised was the eventual tabling of a bill, maybe sometime in 2017, where some in the Liberal caucus say it might be later, rarely sooner. Nothing consistent here. Apparently, we'll get a bill that solves the whole problem of drugs, whereas the first step would be putting in place a simple measure that's understood by all Canadians and that would completely eliminate the possibility of a teenager influenced by a bunch of friends who just feels like experiencing uh, uh, marijuana, because we know that in adolescence we all want to have new experiences, but we don't want this kid to have his or her life broken by a criminal record. Travel would be much more difficult, finding a job, etc. So there is an inconsistency here that I fail to understand. Now, allow me to bring you back to my own teenage years. The question may have been simpler because in those days, becoming a man or rebelling was to try smoking marijuana. And one could get these or just smoking, period, one-cent cigarettes, which have disappeared now. We've seen that's changed. It's changed so much, and why? Because by educating the public from one generation to the next, we ended up demonstrating clearly the harmful effects of cigarette smoking. So that means that generation after generation saw the rate of cigarette smoking reduce considerably. The battle's never won. There are still young people attracted by cigarettes, and we have to demonstrate to them that this is harmful to their health. So what we're saying through that example is that, thank you, Mr. Speaker, that $4 million spent on our legal system to hear cases that may or may not lead to a criminal record for a teenager if those $4 million were used to educate people on this issue, I think that would be a great step forward. Contrary to what some believe, there's no direct correlation between trying marijuana and uh, that becoming a gateway to hard drugs. So. There's a lot that can be done simply through health education. And I'd like to wrap up with a few statistics because I know time is flying. But just to give you an idea of the situation, that $4 million a year that we invest uh, in prosecutions, well, that's 80% of the cannabis offenses. 80% of the cases have to do with simple possession. So attacking the rest of the, of the machine is one thing, but 80% of the cases are just simple possession. 22,000 people uh, are at risk of winding up with a criminal record. And 68% of Canadians say yes, take the first step, decriminalize, and work instead 
on education. Focus on education so that people just maybe will experiment, but they won't uh, be become addicted. And together, slowly but surely, all parties seem to be converging on the NDP approach. This is the approach we've been proposing for several years. I see my time is up, uh, and perhaps I can pursue my uh, logic through questions and answers. Questions and comments? Now, member for Laurence de Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I visited my riding, meeting students, and they all asked for this. Everyone, they wanted to know what our position was. Our position is legalization. Not one student said, thanks for changing the rules already so that I can smoke right away. They're not uh, chomping at the bit for this. They understand what's going on. I just would like to know from my colleague, who would control the market if we simply decriminalized without taking any other steps? Who would control the market? Now, a member for Trois Rivières. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank my colleague for his question. I've been a teacher for 25 years, so uh, that, of course, is a concern. Who currently controls the market? Organized crime. So we can quickly agree on that. Tomorrow morning, what I'm hoping for with decriminalization is that we can work on the buyer. If there's no buyer, there's no market. Then we can take a giant step at that level. And if, in addition, the person is educated so that there are fewer clients and people don't get criminal records for making one mistake in their lives, well, I think right there that'll be a huge step forward. Questions and comments? Blue Prince George. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I, I find it, uh, again, humorous that um, uh, we are uh, we're coming to the defense of those that make a choice to do something illegal. They're choosing to do something illegal that they know is illegal, and the NDP are standing up for them. And, and again, I'm sorry, but I have a hard time with that. Through you, Mr. Speaker, I want to ask, uh, again, on the driving impairment. You know, the NDP motion calls for immediate uh, decriminalization of this. You know, through you, Mr. Speaker, does the honourable colleague know what, what level uh, of impairment, uh, uh, you know, is it one joint, is it half a joint, or is it a quarter of a joint? How do, how do we judge? And how, how, there's, this is something that is, uh, is uh, very important as we move forward, the immediate decriminalization of this, uh, of this drug. And we have our police agencies alongside the road trying to, to uh, enforce laws and, and, uh, uh, or judge impairment. So through you, Mr. Speaker, does the honourable colleague, is he aware of any of the studies of, of the effects of uh, marijuana and, and what the level of impairment uh, is? Thank you. Now, a member for Trois-Rivières. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll give a very legal answer, but I think it sums up what a teenager is thinking when they live minute by minute. Making love when you're a teenager is totally legal, but too often I've seen students, for example, a young girl who falls in love and she, sa and she gets pregnant and she says, it's impossible, we only did it once. That's not the question. Coming back to drugs, the question is simple possession. I'm not saying we need to uh, legalize pushers who are selling the drugs. I'm saying we shouldn't give a student a uh, criminal record for trying marijuana and getting caught with simple possession. And I would remind everyone that's 80% of the caseload is simple possession. That's what we want to solve with this motion. Questions and comments? Our deputy, our the Honourable Member for Hochelaga. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There's a man of a certain age who I know he has a criminal record because he slipped up. It was simple possession. That's what we're talking about today. And because of that, he can't travel to the U.S. So some of his family live in a far-off country. And most flights from Canada, because it's fairly far away, have to transit the U.S. So he can't visit his relatives in that other country because he would have to go through the U.S. and he can't. It's also hard to get a job when you have a criminal record. A criminal record for something that within a year will no longer be illegal. So I'd like to know whether my colleague has seen cases 
of the kind in his own writing. Gentleman member for Trois Rivières. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank my colleague for her question. The short answer is yes. And I would say what's worse, the legacy of the previous conservative government is such that it's even harder, even more onerous for a person to get a pardon. And that means that an individual with a criminal record for simple possession of marijuana who wants to get a pardon, well, it's going to cost that person more for an offense that's considered minor. And the Liberals say, at any rate, by 2017, it will disappear because we're going to fully legalize marijuana. The Honourable Member for Mount Royal.